In this lecture, we will deal with antibacterials that interfere with protein translation. As mentioned already, protein translation is an, an essential process for cells to stay alive. Shown in the diagram on the left is the ribosome translating protein from mRNA. The smaller subunit interacts firstly with mRNA, and then the large, large subunit come along, comes along and attaches. Transfer RNA or tRNA arrives with a specific amino acid that is dictated by a specific anti-codon codon interaction with the mRNA. This arrives at the A site, uh, shown on the top right of the, of the slide, and moves along to the P site where a peptide bond, shown on the bottom right, is formed with a growing polypeptide chain and then departs from the E site. This happens every time a new amino acid is added to the polypeptide until a stop codon is reached where no amino acid is added and the polypeptide detaches from the complex. Eukaryotic and prokaryotic ribosomes are different and this provides the basis for selective antimicrobial action. The eukaryotic uh, ribosome consists of a 60S and a 40S subunit to give an 80S complete ribosome. The bacterial ribosome consists of a 50S and a 30S subunit to give a 70S complete ribosome. To initiate bacterial translation, mRNA must bind to the 30S subunit first and then bind to the 50S. There are a number of different steps in the formation of the ribosome as well as the processing of mRNA where antibacterials could potentially interfere. Shown in this diagram are four such places where antibacterials can interfere. Each of the four groups of drugs we will discuss has a unique mechanism and point of interaction with the translation apparatus, starting with the amphenicols, uh, as highlighted in red here, where they bind to the 50S portion. Amphenicols inhibit protein synthesis by binding to the 50S subunit and inhibit the formation of the peptide bond. These are a broad spectrum class of antibiotic. They're bacteriostatic for more, most uh, organisms, but kill Haemophilus influenza. Resistance is mediated by plasma transfer of the enzyme chloramphenicol acetyltransferase, which renders the molecule ineffective. As a reminder, a flowchart of how we classify antibiotics is shown at the bottom, which includes the spectrum of action, the route of administration, and the type of activity. Chloramphenicol is given orally and is rapidly and completely absorbed and can reach Cmax in two hours. It is widely distributed throughout the tissues and fluids, including the CSF. It is excreted in the urine, uh, with 10% remaining unchanged, and metabolized in the liver. Its side effects include gastrointestinal disturbances and hypersensitivity reactions. A rare side effect in some includes pancytopenia, which is a decrease in all blood cell types and therefore its use is restricted. Clinical use of chloramphenicol should be reserved for serious infections as side effects can be serious as mentioned, the hematolo hematological toxicity. It is used for resistant Haemophilus influenza infections in meningitis where patients can take penicillin, in conjunctivitis as it is safe when given topically, and in cases of typhoid fever. Our second family that targets protein translation are the macrolides, which includes the member erythromycin. These, are, these also bind to the 50S subunit. The macrolides are recognisable by having a lactone ring structure, as shown in the diagram on the right. They inhibit protein synthesis by binding to the 50S subunit by preventing translocation movement of the ribosome along the mRNA. Examples of the family include erythromycin, clarithromycin, and azithromycin. These are generally broad spectrum. Erythromycin is a safe alternative to penicillin sensitive patients. Resistance can occur from a plasmid a controlled alteration in the binding site for erythromycin on the ribosome. Erythromycin is effective against gram positive but not gram negative bacteria. Clarithromycin and azithromycin are effective against Haemophilus influenza. Erythromycin is administered orally and it distributes to most tissues but does not cross the blood-brain barrier and penetrates the synovial joints poorly. It can, however, accumulate in phagocytes and is eliminated in the bile. Erythromycin is partly inactivated in the liver. Azithromycin, on the other hand, is resistance to activation and the third member, clarithromycin, is converted to an active metabolite. 
their inhibition of P450 enzymes can affect the bioavailability of some drugs, such as theophylline. Side effects include gastrointestinal disturbances, opportunistic infections and hypersensitivity reactions, such as rashes and fever. Our third family is the tetracyclines, which are indicated on the diagram and can interfere with the attachment of the tRNA to mRNA ribosome complexes. Tetracyclines are recognisable, as the name suggests, by their four rings, as shown in its prototypical member tetracycline in the diagram on the right. They are generally broad-spectrum antibiotics. Their uptake into bacterial cells is by active transport. They inhibit protein synthesis by interfering with the attachment of tRNA to mRNA. They are generally bacteriostatic, not bactericidal, and examples include tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline. Tetracyclines are usually given orally, but can be given parenterally also. Their absorption varies, but is improved in the absence of food. They chelate metal ions such as calcium, magnesium, iron and aluminium forming complexes. Their absorption as a result is decreased with the likes of milk in the diet and in tacit drugs as well. Side effects include gastrointestinal disturbances due to the loss of microbiota. They can be deposited in growing bones and teeth, which can lead to bone and teeth deformities in young children and therefore are contraindicated for those under the age of eight. Their clinical use has declined in recent years due to widespread resistance. They are broad spectrum for gram positive and gram negative bacteria, but also for protozoa, mycoplasma and spirochetes. They can be used for some respiratory tract infections causing chronic uh, bronchitis. They are also indicated for um, chlamydia, anthrax and brucellosis. They can be used as an alternative for patients with allergies to some other antibiotics also. Our final group that target protein synthesis are the aminoglycosides and these, as highlighted in the diagram, act by targeting the 30S ribosome subunit. As is shown in the diagram on the right, aminoglycosides act by changing the shape of the 30A subunit, causing an abnormal anti-codon-codon interaction and misreading uh, uh, as a result of the mRNA. The diagram shows an incorrect amino acid being matched with the codon. Their crossing of the bacterial cell membrane depends on active transport. Their effects are often bactericidal. Resistance can arise due to degradation by microbial enzymes or by blocking cell entry. Their function is enhanced with the beta-lactam drugs. They are effective against a wide range of aerobic, gram-negative and some gram-positive bacteria. They have low activity with anaerobes. Examples include streptomycin, gentamicin and neomycin. Aminoglycosides are cations and are highly polar, so are not absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract. They can be given intramuscularly muscularly or intravenously. They cross the placenta, but not the blood-brain barrier. Elimination is usually by the kidney by uh, glomerular filtration, with 50% being unchanged. Dose-related side effects include nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity, and therefore serum levels should be monitored as a result. Ototoxicity is caused by destruction of sensory cells in the cochlea and results in vertigo or loss of balance. Nephrotoxicity is manifested by damage to the nephron tubules and can prevent its own excretion and accumulation causes further damage as a result. They can be used with infections by gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli. Following on from antibacterial drugs, we will now briefly discuss antimycobacterial drugs and pay particular attention to the condition known as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a contagious infection caused by an airborne bacteria known as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It usually affects the lungs but can affect any organ. There are an estimated 8 million new cases and 3 million deaths each year worldwide. Mycobacteria invade and replicate within the alveolar macrophages, as shown in the diagram on the right. Mycobacterium can survive inside macrophages after phagocytosis for many years in a state of dormancy. 
Activation can occur during impairment of the immune system, such as during immunosuppression or with conditions such as AIDS, HIV. The map on this slide from the World Health Organization shows the estimated cases per 100,000 people worldwide. The countries with low numbers tend to have vaccination programs with the BCG vaccine. Most cases are concentrated in sub-Saharan Africa, where there is also a high incidence of HIV AIDS. From a therapy perspective, monotherapy is ineffective, recognized since 1952 with the failure of the drug streptomycin. There is now multi-drug resistant TB and even extensive drug resistant TB. In countries where TB is prevalent, people with HIV AIDS are 20 times more likely to contract TB. Long-term and multi-drug therapeutic approaches exist with two steps in treatment. The first being the initial intensive or bactericidal phase lasting around two months where mycobacteria with a high replication rate are killed resulting in clinical recovery. The second phase is a continuation or sterilization phase for around four months and this is orientated to eliminating any semi-dormant uh, mycobacteria. The initial phase of treatment involves four drugs in total, two bactericidal drugs known as lysinizid and rifampicin, and then ethambutol, which to inhibit the monoresistant strains, and a fourth drug, parazinamide, which acts on the semi-dormant bacteria. During the continuation phase and in drug-susceptible TB, two drugs are sufficient, those being lysinizid and rifampicin. Treatment of the multidrug resistant TB is much more complicated. This table summarizes these regimens and their doses and durations. The diagram on this slide shows a mycobacterial cell and the points at which individual drugs act, including drugs we have just mentioned, such as isonized, pyrazinamide, and rifampicin. Isonized's antimycobacterial action is limited to myco mycobacterium. It inhibits synthesis of mycolic acid, which is shown in the diagram on the right, and it is an important constituent to the mycobacterium cell wall, which is distinct from peptidoglycan found in bacteria. It is bacteriostatic but can kill dividing cells. It is a prodrug that must be activated by bacterial enzymes. It is readily absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and is widely distributed through most tissues and fluids such as the cerebrospinal fluid. It also manages to penetrate deep into necrotic lesions caused by infection. Metabolism of isoniazid is by acetylation with so slow and fast acetylators in the general population shown on the top right. This is determined by polymorphisms or genetic mutations of the enzyme NAT2, standing for N-acetyltransferase, as shown in the diagram on the bottom right of the slide. Slow acetylators have a better therapeutic response, but can lead to toxicity. Isonized is excreted via the kidney, partly unchanged and partly acetylated. Side effects include allergic skin reactions. Isonized may interact with other drugs by inhibiting metabolism of other drugs such as phenytoin and carbamazepine, which leads to toxicity of these drugs. Our second drug used in therapy is called rifampicin. It inhibits RNA polymerase in prokaryotic, but interestingly not in eukaryotic cells. It is also effective against leprosy, also caused by a mycobacterium, and some gram-positive and negative bacteria. It can enter phagocytes and therefore reach mycobacterium in the alveolar macrophages. It is given orally and is widely distributed in tissues and fluids. It is excreted by the kidneys and bile. Its metabolites retain antibacterial activity. Side effects are not frequent but include fever, skin rashes and gastrointestinal disturbances. Drug interactions can cause induction of metabolizing enzymes and can lead to an increase in degradation of warfarin and estrogens common in the contraceptive pill. Other anti-TB drugs include ethambutol. This only affects mycobacterium with a bacteriostatic effect. It is given orally and is well absorbed. It can be taken up by red blood cells in the blood and partly metabolized and excreted in the kidney. Side effects include 
optic neuritis, which can lead to red-green colour blindness. Our fourth drug is perizinamide. It is effective at low and not neutral pH, which gives it its tuberculostatic effect. Mycobacterium are often found at low pH inside phagolosomes having been ingested by alveolar macrophages. The drug is orally well absorbed, well distributed, excreted by the kidney and side effects include gout and should, urate levels should be monitored in the blood. Finally, there have been some novel drugs developed in recent years, including betaquiline and delamanide. The target for betaquiline is mycobacterial ATP synthase involving a unique mechanism. It is also metabolized by P450 enzymes. Rifampicin induces this enzyme, thus reducing plasma concentrations of betaquiline. It seems to have promise as an adjunct therapy for multidrug resistant and extensive drug resistant tuberculosis. The mechanism of delamanid is incompletely understood but may involve inhibition of mycolic acid synthesis. It is a prodrug requiring metabolism by mycobacterial enzymes. It is currently being investigated in multidrug resistant and extensive drug resistance TB.